Today it's all about amending garden soil using amend, but this isn't your typical gardening video, so stay tuned to find out what we're going to be doing a little differently. You know, that just doesn't seem like enough. That's better. Thanks for watching the video today. This is In Search of Soil. I'm your host, Diego, D-I-E-G-O. And today we are talking amending soil and compost. Most farmers and most gardeners will amend their soil before they start planting. And oftentimes they'll even do it in between crops after each season. There's a lot of compost hitting the soil. How much is enough? How much is too much? That's what we're gonna be testing today. This idea of is more compost better? We're gonna run an experiment. We're gonna apply zero compost and then we're gonna apply a whole bunch of compost and we're gonna see which one performs better. Today it's time to put in a brand new garden bed. This is virgin soil. It's never had anything grown in it since I've lived here for the past 10 years. It just kind of sat idle on this side of the fence for the past few months. It's been under black plastic as I've tried to retain a lot of the moisture in the soil. There's a little bit of mulch covering part of the bed, which I'll be raking off. Soil itself isn't bad. It's just whatever native soil was here. There's probably some scrape and fill from when they built the house, which is that away, and they flattened out the pad. They pushed a lot of the soil this way. So we're going to try and grow in this, but then we're also going to do what a lot of people are going to do. We're going to amend the soil and grow in that as well. So here's what we're starting with. The native soil. And it looks pretty good. It's moist. It looks like it's got some organic matter in it. It's holding together, but not so much so that it's like clay. It's loamy. It's not sandy. It looks good, yet it will need amending. So next up, we're just going to amend. Bed number one, nothing. Bed number two, a dusting. Like, we know compost is good, right? But how much is too much? And how much just might not be enough? So today we're gonna be testing this idea of how much compost is enough. We have five beds. A control bed, no compost. One bed, a dusting of compost. Number three bed, one inch of compost. Then three inches of compost. And on our final bed, we'll go up to six inches of compost. And then we're gonna plant the same exact crop into each of those sections and see which one grows out better. Let's get this experiment started and find out what we're working with. Bed number three, half a bag. Bed number four, one bag. Bed number five, two and a half bags. One word of advice, if you're ever working with this, it has dehydrated chicken manure in it. Wear gloves, because it smells like dehydrated chicken manure. There we go, five different beds with five different compost applications. Each one of these sections is 36 inches by 36 inches. The end bed has zero compost in it. That costs us nothing. The other end of the spectrum is our bed number five that has two and a half bags of compost in it to get it that six inches of compost depth. If you think about that, that's about $20 worth of compost in one little teeny tiny section. Will that amount of monetary input return that much vegetables? Not just now, but over time. We'll have to see, but I have my doubts. And this is why I really wanted to do that experiment. I feel like too many people are using too much compost. They're not really thinking about how much they actually need or why they need it. They're just dumping it on and dumping it on and dumping it on. And it's a waste of money, it's a waste of resources, and it's a waste of time. Now, I'm not gonna say it's not helpful. It's not 
a negative. It's definitely a positive. It's not a negative there, but it is potentially a waste. Think about this as a gardener. A lot of gardeners garden to save money. And if you're adding a lot of inputs to the garden, that's costing you money. It's not keeping money in your pocket. So anytime you're adding something to the soil, think about if you really need it and if you need it in the quantities that you're actually using it because you might not. And if you don't, then you might as well keep the money and spend it on something else. If we look at the beds here, what are we actually really testing? We have five different applications of compost ranging from none to six inches deep. If we think about the six inch deep section of compost, most vegetable roots aren't going that deep into the soil. Yes, they do have roots that penetrate down deeper, but a lot of their feeder roots are right at surface. So for the most part in the six inch deep section, I'm growing those plants exclusively in the compost that I just put down, where on the zero compost bed, I'm growing in just soil. The other beds are just gonna be a mix. I'm kind of amending that soil underneath and providing some additional nutrients to the soil. And the feeder roots are going into the soil and the compost that I've added. So we have the two extremes. We have nothing to growing in pure compost. Here's what our plants look like in each of the beds. We'll monitor the progress of these and we'll see if we can notice any difference between any of these plants in any of these beds given the rate of compost that we've applied. I think it goes without saying, nothing else will be different between these. I'll add water as needed to each of the beds. I'm not gonna fertilize any beds or treat any other bed differently than the other. The only difference would be watering. I'm going to add water as needed. So not every bed's gonna get the exact same amount of water because different soil types are gonna hold different amounts of water. And I don't want one soil to become waterlogged, but I think you get that. Who do you vote for? Let let me know in the comments below number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, or choice number six, which is we won't be able to tell which one actually did better. There will be no difference at all. One through six, leave your vote in the comments below and come back to this channel on September 4th for Clash of the Composts. It is the Compost Battle Royale. Five sets of plants facing off, facing dramatically different conditions. Which one will do better? Find out here on YouTube, September 4th. Thanks for watching, and until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work. I think number one, I'm all for number one. It's all natural, it's gonna work. He's not an inflator or a juicer like number six. So I'm all for number one. Man, number six has got this thing on lock and we have belief in the power of the compost to make this happen.